Welcome to Love Set Run. I'm Andre. And I'm Sierra. Join us as we backpack around the world, leaving a footprint of love everywhere we go. We'll show you how you can consciously volunteer on your travels, how fun and rewarding it is to give back, and how you too can make a difference in the world. This was a trek that my dad and his friend did in 1970, long before Everest Base Camp treks were a thing. And now, here I am, walking the same strenuous, breathless path 47 years later. It feels sacred, and even more thrilling than base camp itself. That was one epic adventure. <laughs> we made it. We made it to Kalapatai, 18,200 feet. Because the mountains surrounding Everest are so high, it's difficult to actually see it. So this little hike gives us the best viewpoint we'll get. All right, Andre. Where in the world are we? We are at Kalamatar, way above Everest Base Camp. We've got killer views of the Himalayas right now. The sun's about to rise over Mount Everest. Getting up here was the second hardest thing I've ever done. What was the first? Climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. It was just unbelievable how much effort it took to put each foot in front of the other and get up here. But when you look at this view, it's all worth it. That definitely was one of the hardest things, if not the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And so we're just waiting for the sun to hit Everest and us too, because we're all freezing. And it was definitely worth it, I'd say, because these views are incredible. Father Sun has finally risen on Mother Earth, the tallest peak in the World. This is the highest elevation of what we are doing in this trip. Wow, we're having the best time. Thank you for guiding us here. Yeah, but you're welcome. Yeah, don't look down there. Oh my god. I could spend all day at Kalapatar if someone would bring me some food and some coffee. It's just been amazing watching the landscape change with the light coming across the mountains. This is a view unlike I've ever seen before. This has been a really special day. I'm just completely fueled by the powerful energy of the mountains around us. It's unreal. Come to the Himalayas. Experience it for yourself. This is how they boil water and potatoes at this elevation with these reflective satellite dishes. Back to Lobuche. Most treks to Everest Base Camp involve the eight days that we just completed and then take another three days to retrace the trail back to Lukla. However, we heard there was an even better route that takes eight more days, passing over what's known as the Chola Pass and winding up at the mystical blue Gokyo Lakes. Guess which way we're going. made it to Jongla. This is our little room. Andre barely fits in here, by the way. <laughs> yep. All right, let's go get some food. Let's do it. My dad trekked through the Himalayas in 1970, and all he had to eat was a stuff called champa. 
and I finally saw it on the menu and I ordered it. Here it is. It's like a porridge of some sort. This one's for you, Dad. Kind of has the consistency of mashed potatoes, but with a grainy flavor. It's not bad. Love you, Dad. Happy birthday to my day. Have a wonderful day. That's awesome. <laughs> Happy birthday, Andre. Thanks. 32. 32. How do you feel? I feel great. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Andre, <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> like so we've been trekking for like 40 minutes and it's been nothing but fog all morning and then all of a sudden in the last like two minutes it cleared and we found this view of the mountains that's been behind us the whole time, and it's insane. Now we can see how difficult it is where we have to go. So that's where we're going, and... This is where we are. We are at Chola Pass. We have arrived at the steepest part of the entire trek. <laughs> Don't let him fool you. This is hard work. You made it. Totally worth a view. After two and a half hours of trekking, we've made it to the top of the hardest part of Chola Pass. So we're at about 17.6 right now. The views are incredible. The views are insane. Happy birthday. Thanks. Chola Glacier. So my friend Andre and Surya, we are crossing Chola. This is the top part. Hope you will enjoy it today. Thank you. And happy birthday again. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this landscape is blowing my mind. I feel like I'm on a different planet. And I feel like a kid. Look at that there. Oh my god. This is so cool. This is up there with one of the coolest things I've ever done. If you step in a corpus, it might be a big problem. It's like a game finish, you know. I don't want this glacier walk to be over. I know. It's been so fun. So cool. Look at this view. Top of Chola <laughs> Pass is in sight. Ten more minutes. Yeah! <laughs> I was coming up there and the rock slipped and pinched my foot against another rock. And it was my bad ankle. It really hurt. Sorry, babe. Love you. Love you. Top of Chola. Chola, welcome guys. Woo! We're at the top of Chola Pass. That was insane coming up here, but it was really fun. It just felt really amazing. <laughs> Epic, big, awesome. It was a slog to get up here. I felt like I was in Interstellar or something. We're at the highest point of our trek. I couldn't really imagine a better way to spend my birthday, so I'm having a blast. What goes up must come down. On the other side of the pass, we're faced with four hours of trekking downhill to our next tea house. And even though the ascent was challenging, the downhill was absolutely brutal on our legs. To here where we are right now. What? We still tried to make the most of it though, and being surrounded by scenery like this, it's easy to forget about physical discomfort and just focus on the beauty. <laughs> Almost there. there. We made it to Tangna. Congratulations. Thank you. 
Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You made some friends from Israel? Yes. Uh, maybe we'll be famous one day. Yes. <laughs> At least on YouTube. <laughs> What's up? Oh man, all I want for my birthday is to kick my feet up and relax. Maybe a hot shower and fingers crossed for a cold beer. And Wi-Fi to call mom and dad. Wi-Fi to stay in touch with the fam. Today was awesome. It was challenging. We went way up high and now we're way down low. My bones hurt. I'm ready for a hot tub. <laughs> but there isn't one for a thousand miles. <laughs> Hot shower. Oh my god. That's what I've been dreaming of. Here's Johnny. Here's the toilet. Oh, that's a good one. Here's the room. Oh. oh thank you, thank you, thank you. Wakey, wakey, Dalbot and Bakey. Dalbot and Bakey. Oh man, what I would do for some bacon right now. It sounds awesome. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Andre. Happy birthday to you. Enjoy your fried rice. <laughs> Today's gonna be kind of an easier day, which is good because our legs need to rest. Uh, we're heading to Gokyo, which will give us a view of the Gokyo lakes, which we're really excited about. All right, let's go. We're about to cross another glacier tongue to get to the Gokyo lakes. The ice is speckled with gems. Tiny nuggets of red garnet are everywhere. Unfortunately, what else was everywhere was melting ice. You could hear the sound of it dripping into the pools below and chunks of glacier crumbling at an alarming rate. Prakash said that each time he does this trek, the path is slightly different because of the constantly changing landscape. Seeing firsthand the irreparable effects of global warming was shocking and heartbreaking. We made it to Gokyo! Nice work, babe. You too. This is our reward. We're gonna climb Gokyo Ri tomorrow, up there. got to our latest tea house. Whoa. Welcome to our crib. It's where the magic happens <laughs> in these two separate beds. This is really what we came for. Oh wow. Look at that view. Bye. Bye. <laughs> burgers that are half gone. We've got lasagna. We've got the wife. And a nice cold beer, which is all I wanted for my birthday. Cheers. Cheers. Happy birthday. Thanks. All right, it is 3.45 in the morning. We didn't get quite as early a start as we wanted to. It's currently snowing. We're summiting Gokyo Ri Mountain at this ungodly hour in the hopes of getting a gorgeous view of Mount Everest from afar. Barely have enough air to drink water. <sighs> what a way to start the morning. Gokyo Ri is just straight up. <sighs> what are we doing? Is this your idea? No, it's Prakash's idea. Yeah. Yeah. I keep looking up and feel like we should be there already. Yes. Oh, thank you. Wow. Yeah.
How do you feel? Accomplished. Sweaty, tired, cold, happy. <laughs> Freezing cold, so we gotta keep moving to stay warm. So we're gonna go explore. We can't see much, but we're gonna see what, what we can see. What do you mean see. you can't see much? You can't see anything. <laughs> this is officially the highest point on Gokyo Ri, and we're just starting to get some sun. You're almost there, and Sierra is down for the count. 17,588. Beat nap time for Prakash. Yes, please. We've been waiting for almost three hours. At least we came and we gave it a shot. Oh my god, look where we came from. Good morning, Gokyo! Today we were gonna head out, but we woke up and looked outside and it was clear as a whistle. The opposite of what we had yesterday. We decided we're gonna attempt the impossible. We're gonna hike Kokiori again, just to see if we can see some mountains. This is our 13th straight day of trekking. We have one chance to get this epic view of the Himalayas from the Gokyo Lakes, and we missed it yesterday, so we're doing it. I hope it pays off. What is this, some sort of sick joke? Second day in a row, summit is in sight, and then this happens. We did it. We did it. <sighs> yeah! Nice work, babe. Ow! Now where's everybody? It's right there. Where? Right there. Right here. See? Where? Hang on, let me zoom in. Okay. Right there. Bummer, two days in a row. Yeah, we pushed ourselves out of our comfort zone. And we did it because when are we gonna be back here again with the chance to do something like this? Now we have like an hour and a half descent and then a five plus hour trek to our next destination, so it's going to be a long day. Summiting Gokyo Ri twice in two days is quite an accomplishment. I think it's more about just proving to yourself what you're capable of and pushing yourself beyond what you think your limits are. And so for that, it was a success. Trekking through the mountains provides the perfect metaphor for life. Sometimes you work really hard to reach a summit and the view wasn't what you had hoped for. Other times you are scrambling uphill exhausted. And at other times it's nice, easy coasting downhill. There are peaks and there are valleys. There is always something more to strive toward. And in the end, what ends up being the most rewarding of all was the journey you took to see all these amazing views along the way. Yes, well done. thanks. Last step of the day. <laughs> we made it. All right, leaving Dole. Bye, Dole. Day number 14, heading to Namki Bazaar. Wow, two weeks we've been out here with you, Prakash. Yeah. There's a lot of up and a lot of down, and then more up and then more down. We'll just take it one step at a time like we have been the whole time. As you can see, the climate has changed drastically just within the last day. The lower we get in elevation, the more lush the terrain becomes. These verdant hillsides are such a stark contrast from the barren altitudes we've just descended from. From rocky glaciers to dense forests and waterfalls, the Himalayas never cease to amaze. I've been in the woods a little too long and I've grown this beard. I think it's quite becoming, so I might keep it. It's unbelievable what you'll see these men and women carry on their backs. Everything has been carted by hand or by yak. You can't take any amenity for granted up here. This is the easiest we've had it in 12 days. Look at this trail. I feel like I'm back in the city already. 
Back in Namche, it's kind of shocking because it's like this big city. We gotta kind of ease back into this whole like civilization thing. Okay, well done. Day 14. 14. Uh, thank you. It's our last day of trekking in the Himalayas. It's really kind of bittersweet because we're gonna miss the mountains, but. I am really looking forward to getting clean and having a real bed to sleep in. This has been one incredible adventure. I'm really proud of both of us for taking on this challenge. I can't believe it's coming to a close. It's been an amazing experience. I want to come back already. Have a look at that Have a look. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Woo! Namaste. 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 Back to the main entrance of Sagarmatha National Park. Sagarmatha, thanks for the good times. Namaste. These are probably the happiest dogs in the world. <laughs> Oh my god. Puppies! It turns out the dogs up here are Sherpas too. We were accompanied by some dogs showing us the way for several miles. This is it. It's the end. 15 days after we started here. It's kind of surreal being back. All we can hope for now is that our flight tomorrow morning makes it out of here because all the flights out of Lukla were canceled today. Prakash, are we going to make it out of Lukla tomorrow? Yeah, we're going to make it out of Lukla. Okay, perfect. I like to hear that. Normally, I'm a very lucky person. So I think we'll That's good because I'm a pretty lucky person too. See ya too. See ya is lucky too. I'm lucky too. So we've got three lucky, and this is a lucky dog. Lucky dog. Yeah. Last few steps. <sighs> we did it. We did it. 15 days in the Himalayas. Yes. So far it looks pretty good. Looks like we might make it out of Lukla today. Fingers crossed. We lost our guide. No, he's right there. Oh, okay. Just kidding. <laughs>
up in Kathmandu. It's a little weird being around so many people and buildings and cars. My head's gonna explode like I just don't know what to do. I'm connected to Wi-Fi. Oh. <laughs> Nice. Oh, yeah. Get me in the shower. Real lights. An actual bed. <laughs> All right, let's get cleaned up. This is my Everest scruff. I call it my EBCB. It's my Everest base camp beard. It's time to undo this rat's nest. Oh my God, it feels so good. <laughs> I mean, they're all crazy. You don't know what I've seen. I've been on the mountains for so long. <laughs> How do you feel about the last day in Nepal? Wow, well, it's a whirlwind. I'm a little sad. I grew accustomed to life in Nepal in some sort of way. I was walking through the streets of Tamil like a pro. I just know how to do it now. Five weeks in Nepal. The Himalayan trek was a peak experience of my life. I'm so glad we did that together. Let's go to country number seven. 